Introducing the Access Web Synchronization Seminar brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. The purpose of this seminar is to show you how you can share data between a local Microsoft Access database and the web. This web seminar has three goals. One, to read information from websites and pull that information down into your local Access database. We'll show you how to read temperature information from a popular weather site. We'll show you how to pull stock information down from different stock websites. The tools we show you in this seminar can be used to pull any information off any website and import it into your Access database. Next, we'll teach you how to collect data on your website using a web form and then copy that information down to your Access database over the web. This technique is useful for gathering customer information, email signups, and lots more data. Finally, we'll teach you how to post data from your local Access database up to the web. You can use this technique to update page information like sales bulletins or news. We'll also see how you can keep a local product database with product names and pricing and quantity on hand and all that stuff, and then post that information up to your website as well. The benefit, of course, is that someone who has absolutely no experience with access or web design can automatically update your website with the click of one button. In the first lesson, you'll learn about the web browser control, how to insert it into your access forms, and how to use it to create your own little web browser right inside of access. We'll add some functionality like a URL address and the ability to tell whether or not the web browser control is currently navigating. Next, we'll actually learn how to analyze that web page and read the HTML code from it as well as read all the page text that comes from that web page. This is how we can get data off the web page later. We'll actually use our little web browser to find the current temperature using a popular mobile site and we'll read the page data that comes down and pick out the temperature information. We'll learn how to take all that temperature data and save it to a table so every time we run it, it saves a history of all those temperatures. I'll teach you how to program a record set to save data to your table. For those of you who haven't already taken my Access 320 to 329 classes, I'll spend a few minutes showing you how to create a record set in code. I'll show you how to program a timer event so that we can launch an event every, let's say, 10 seconds. We'll create a table that'll store a list of zip codes, and then our event timer will run down that list of zip codes every 10 seconds and gather up the temperature data from the websites automatically. That's how we can run multiple events in our web forms. Now, getting weather data like temperature is handy, but checking stock quotes is a lot more useful. So next, we're going to turn our web form into something that we can use to check stock quotes off the internet. We'll get information on the trades, opens, highs, volumes, last price, all that stuff. We'll make a table that'll have all the stocks in it that we want to check. This example just shows Microsoft and IBM. We'll make the timer form be able to check temperature and or stock quotes, and we'll set the interval, the number of seconds, between the times it checks. This way, you can make your database go out to the web, check your stocks every, let's say, 10 minutes, maybe even sound an alarm if you want, and record the stock name, the last price, the change, the volume, all that stuff. Next, we're going to learn how to collect data on your website. Now, I'm going to use Microsoft Expression Web, but these lessons are the same whether you're using Expression Web or Front Page, going all the way back to Front Page 2000. You can use a different web editor if you want. You won't get as much out of the lesson, but you'll see how to set this up. We'll create a form on our website to collect user email signups, first name, last name, email address. I'll show you a neat feature in Expression Web and Front Page that lets Front Page create the database for you to save this data on your website. And then you'll see how to submit that data to the database on your web. Now, the form confirmation page the front page has for you isn't very interesting looking. 
So I'll show you how to take some ASP code and make your own confirmation page that the user sees when they submit their data. And you can also check and validate the information too and make sure it's okay before submitting it. Now that we know how to collect data on our website from our users, our visitors, now we're going to create a page to actually display that information back in a format that our access database can read back in. Now that we know how to display that information on our web page, we can use the same techniques in the earlier lessons to read that web page from our access database and parse all the information out, saving that information into our table. That's how we get the information from the web down into our access database. Of course, then once you pull the data down from the web server, we'll have to delete it from the server so our server database doesn't fill up. Next, we're going to learn how to feed your website with data so you can have live content on your website that is database fed. This is great, for example, if you want people who aren't familiar with web design to be able to update your website. For example, we'll create two bits of information in a table on our website, a news page and a sales page. We'll put some content in each of those pages. For example, the news page just says today is the first day of our summer sale. We'll throw in a database connection and a little ASP code. And then voila, your web pages are fed with data from a database. Now this example here, as you can see in Explorer, isn't that pretty, but you can make this page as pretty as you want with tables and graphics and colors and all that stuff. My goal is to show you how to take data from the database and display it on your web page for the viewers. Now my goal here is to control the content on my website from my local access database. That way the secretary can just update information in her little access database, click a button, and post all that information up to the website using the techniques we've learned earlier. This way she can update web content, just news and information like that, or you can update product information, customer details, all that stuff can be posted straight up to the website from your local access database. And see, here it is. One simple form, one button click, update all change pages, and your website is instantly updated. Next, we'll learn how to get data onto our website using a web form, but we're not going to be posting the information in the web form ourselves. I'm going to teach the access database to fill in the web form fields and hit submit. This way, you can use secure pages to transfer information to your website securely. Then what we're going to do is we're going to make an actual product form in our access database and make it so with one click I can update this information to my website and generate a nice product list and here's the final product I click one button on my access database it uploads all this product information directly to my website's database and then we made an ASP page with a little bit of HTML some table stuff in there where it displays the picture the product name, the price, the quantity on hand, and all that. And the benefit here is that someone who knows nothing about databases, nothing about websites, can instantly update your product list on your website with one button click. So to find out more about the Access Web Synchronization Seminar, visit my website at accesslearningzone.com. Attention YouTube viewers, just for watching my courses here on YouTube, you can get a special discount on this seminar by going to accesslearningzone.com slash YouTube. You can watch my Access 101 full course for free on my website. It's a 90-minute course. You also get a 50% discount on any of my tutorials, including this Access Web Seminar. In order to get that discount, you must go to this page, accesslearningzone.com slash YouTube.